Which means that today is July 7th and my book to birthday. Like I said, she needed her ass beat for that. I don't care why she said it was, I don't care how much sense it makes, but she had the worst first impression and I'm just, she triggered me, shit. They keep describing him as attractive and I don't trust attractive people in books. Hello friends, good morning. It is Tuesday now. Um, please excuse my appearance. I honestly might just look like this all day until I decide to film and that's if I decide to film because technically I don't need to film this week. Um, sorry if you can hear my washing machine going or dryer. They're both running. It's kind of loud um, and I'm sure that that's annoying but Today is supposed to be a very productive day for me. Like I have a lot to do. I need to clean. <laughs> um, I also signed up for like doing some more stuff with work. Like usually I only do one of my jobs today. Now I'm doing both. And <laughs> uh, so we'll see what happens today. But hey, how y'all doing? Welcome to a new vlog. It's been a minute since I've vlogged. Um, and that's just because like my head has yeah, like I've said in many videos that I've um, posted lately, I, I just have not been here. Like up here, I have not been doing well, but I'm doing a lot better. Or I should say I'm doing better. I don't want to say a lot because that's a little dramatic, but I'm doing better. Um, and I actually have energy. So yeah, hello friends, how are you? I hope all is well. If it's not, that is fine. Take a moment, take a deep breath breathe and you know just live i mean that's kind of how i've been doing it i'm like you don't have to solve the world's problems right now you don't have to solve all your problems right now but there is a way to like live with them and just what is it called reflect and take in your emotions without you know completely falling apart. And so that's where I've been lately, just trying to like really take in and understand my emotions without letting them build up. So that's been a journey. <laughs> but yeah, let's talk about reading updates. Um, as it is July 5th now, I have finished one book and that was The Score by L. Kennedy. I think I finished it on the first or the second. Um, I can't remember which. And I think I said it was the first on Storygraph, but I couldn't remember by today. So yeah. Um, so I finished the score by L. Kennedy. I gave that one four stars. I'm just having fun with this series. Like it's a nice, I don't really need to think about anything. Solid reads so far. There wasn't any like oddly racial undertones when it comes like rap, rap and rap was not mentioned at all and that made me very happy um if you have seen my comments on what was the last the mistake you kind of know what i'm talking about i think dean was a fun character to get to be in the head of both characters honestly were really great to be in the head of but dean honestly he stood out because he's just the life of dean is a great way to summarize his presence as a character and it was really fun to read that being said it's a kennedy so um <laughs> i don't know she thought hey there's no truly traumatic thing that um creates the character like there's nothing that really is the essence of either of these characters that is truly traumatic although one would think that is a no grace was the mistake what is her name Hannah Grace. Yeah. I don't know. No, I don't have it. And I literally just put my book back. Ew, if you can see the mess behind me, that's also a part of how productive today needs to be. But what is her name? I can't remember. But you know, like her parents both have, or both had 
illnesses. One, her dad is still alive and he has MS. And then her mom passed away when she was very young from cancer. So that is already quite traumatic. But you know, that all happens off screen. And her dad is still here. And although his symptoms are described every now and then, it wasn't quite as traumatic as L. Kennedy needs, apparently, for this series to have to be. Um, and so there was a little, tra there was a tra little traumatic part, not a little, it was, I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed. <laughs> Cause why? <laughs> there's nothing I hate more than like, well, I hate's a strong word, but there's nothing more annoying to me than when authors introduce a character and really truly make me fall in love with a character just so they can hurt, hurt that character. Like I'll be, oh, you're annoying. Ugh so annoying but um for those of you that care smut wise i would say this one was the best like they they were bunnies they never stopped honestly now that i think about it, that character part it was probably a 3.5 yeah it was probably a 3.5 and now i think about it in comparison to the deal and the mistake Although this one didn't take me a long time to read, it did take me longer to read than those. And like for those books, I, di I didn't want to stop reading them until I had finished them and then work got in the way or life got in the way and I had to like stop reading them. But every time I was working or away from the books, I wanted to get back to them. The score didn't really ha give me that feeling. Um, so maybe it's a little bit less of a rating. So maybe it's 3.5. I should fix that on Story Graph. Um, but still a fun book to read. Um, that, the, the way it ended really has me like itching to go into the goal. I actually bought, purchased the goal. I, the fact that I can see my baby hair is annoying the crap out of me, but I actually did like immediately purchase the goal. Um, so I'm gonna try and wait until the happily ever after readathon, but we shall see. We'll, we'll see. There's so many romance reads that I can read. <laughs> so uh, I want to read it with everyone though. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I am going to pick up today or whenever I have the chance to read because every time I say I'm going to pick up today, I, it never ends up happening. But I'm going to pick up The Final Strife by Sara L. Arifi. Wait, yeah. So, Sara El Arifi, I believe. If that's incorrect, please let me know. Um, cause I don't know if I'm gonna finish this in this vlog, but I would like the next time I mention the author's name in another video to be accurate. So if you know how to pronounce this author's name, please let me know. And if I was wrong, I'll correct myself. Um, but yeah, I saw this a ton on Instagram and I don't know much about it. I actually did read the um, synopsis for it at Barnes and Nobles when I bought the book and I've since forgotten it. But I do remember like the way the map is set up and how, and I believe parts of the synopsis kind of gave me the vibe, not so much the storyline, but the vibes that I got from Children of Blood and Bone, which was one of my favorite reads for a very long time. Like since I had read it, until I had gotten out of my slump, basically. Um, it was lit like one of my favorite reading reads, one of my favorite reading experiences. I had really enjoyed it. And then, you know, that second book did what it did. We don't have to talk about it. We don't, we really don't. Um, but I'm hoping to get those vibes again with a book series or a duology. I can't remember how many books this is supposed to be that hopefully, um, you know, doesn't completely fuck up the character development and character line of my favorite character. Like why the, oh, why my favorite? But okay, that's okay. It's fine. I, uh, I'm gonna say I still like the second book, but that's because I was a lot kinder towards books. I hadn't been reading that much. So it was like, I have nothing to base you off of. So the fact that you annoyed me, I mean, it was still okay. I don't know. I don't know. But this one's a thickie. This is a thick one. Okay. So we'll see if I finish this during this um, vlog. 
I don't know what I'm gonna read in tandem with this book because I do have quite a few audiobooks. Hello you guys, it is Thursday night now, which means that today is July 7th and my book due birthday. Thank you so much to everyone who joined me for the live and celebrated my birthday with me. And of course, thank you to all of you watching this and everyone that has watched my videos in the past. And of course, everyone who is subscribed. It means the absolute world to me. I genuinely can't explain how happy this channel makes me and how happy you all make me with your support. It's just like so great because this is like my creative outlet, my escape, my happy place and you all have just been so supportive and so great and nice and yeah thank you so much for all of this and just a really great year and i can't wait to have more with you all now some reading updates shall we oh or let's do book updates like it's just general book updates now of course it's my book to birthday and no birthday would be complete without presents so i bought myself two presents technically it's like one because it was one order but it's two books and that is oh my god they're so heavy laura olympus and volume two of laura olympus um stunning cover love this beautiful i can't wait to read it i have heard nothing but glowing and raving reviews like i genuinely don't think i've heard a single person say anything negative about this book or rather even like the webtoon that it is based on or not even based on but like the webtoon of it that has now been turned into a book and our multiple volumes are coming out I know the one the third one's coming out in this is July I almost said July <laughs> the third one's coming out I think sometime near my birthday I can't remember if it was October or if it was November Shit, it could be September, but it's sometime around my birthday. This is how I split up the month, by the way. If it happens at the end of the year, I'm, I'm around my birthday. <laughs> but yeah, I got me those two books for my book two birthday, and I can't wait to read them. Now, updates on the book that I am reading, The Final Strife. Um, I didn't feel like putting the dust jacket on it because I only have one hand. <laughs> Like, I didn't feel like putting this down and restarting it all. So, no dust jacket. But the book itself, stunning. I love it. I'm 77? 70? Yeah, I'm 77 pages in at the moment. And it's, I just love it all. There, like, as you can tell, there are just so many annotations. And it's like, I'm not gonna lie it's very sad and I definitely suggest checking out the content warnings for this book because there are a lot and it definitely hits my heart and like hurts my heart at times and it's just like hard to read but there's also something that I feel with like I don't know there's also kind of like a solidarity I feel with books like this because you know it's like an accurate depiction of what Black people and African people have have to have had to deal with historically or not well I was gonna say or not accurate but like yeah accurate and in the accuracies and in the moments that I can like relate to internally I'm just like yeah just like yeah I feel that I feel that and I think that that's what really makes it hurt a lot because it's something that I'm like my ancestors have gone through this or I have experienced this and it's just the world is not kind. It says on the back of the dust jacket, I really should have grabbed the dust jacket, that the author, there was just one line that really stuck out to me. And it was the fact that when her family moved to a predominantly white community, she finally realized what it meant to be black in a predominantly white space. And I was just like, call me out why don't you <laughs> because that's kind of what I experienced when I was 12 and my family had moved to a predominantly white community and that is where we stayed until I graduated um high school and so it was just like I felt that that line right there I felt that and um while the book takes place or takes place or is inspired by um African and Arabian mythology there are still connections there and I just 
I feel it is the point and I'm really enjoying it. And yes, it hurts. And yes, it's hard to read. Like it's hard at times, but it's like, I don't want to put it down. I'm very, very invested in this story. Um, so yeah, check out the content warnings. Like they're intense, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this book. I'm so happy. I'm feeling like this is a really good start to my reading month. Let's hope July continues to bring great reads like this my way. And let's hope that I am not reading this book for all of July. I'm scared. <laughs> or lately when I love books, I just eventually, if I feel like I'm getting close to ending it, I just like slow down so much in reading it because I don't want it to end. So like, let's hope that doesn't happen this time. So far, the chapters have just been hitting so good with plot twists plot progressions and stuff that I have me like oh no I need to read more so hopefully this keeps up and this pacing keeps up for the entirety of the book or at least it doesn't slow down more than this I do hope it like speeds up you know like pacing usually does at some point but hopefully it never slows down from this because this is so good I know you probably can't see me that's fine um I just read some shit that has honestly just pissed me the fuck off. <laughs> Anor need to get her ass beat one good time on page. Like, I need to see it. I need to see her get her ass beat. I'm on page 112. Well, actually, I read, I'm done with the chapter now. But page 112, Anor needs to get her ass beat. Mm. <laughs> we'll discuss later but <laughs> hi hello you guys it is saturday now i just got back from getting my nails done but let's talk about books let's talk about this bad boy right here the, oh Last night, I finished part one of The Final Strife, and <sighs> I'm feeling so many things. So I, like, so much so that I have officially decided that this is going to be a full vlog of me reading this. Until I finish this book, I am not finishing this vlog. <laughs> so anything else I thought of highlighting during this vlog, even maybe the um, haul I just did, like, any of that stuff might be taken out for time's sake because this this right here I I was like okay I could just finish it and it'd be fine but I want to be able to go back on the vlog and just watch the entirety of my experience with this book <laughs> like I don't want to have to go through different vlogs to get the entirety of my experience with this book I just wanted to be in one place so I can go back to it all the time because this is I'm loving it I'm loving it so much and I was raving about it on Instagram and so many people are already like oh yes thanks for letting me know I will be getting it now you're welcome I'm so happy you're doing this again please check out the content warning so it can be quite hard to read at times so like I said I just finished part one and with part one the author really wanted to focus in on the setting and the characters so we got a very good understanding of kind of the political state of Naruto Naruto I I need to check out how to pronounce that um you're just getting how embers and dusters and ghostings are treated the final strife I guess I haven't actually talked about what it's about but the final strife follows three individuals focusing more so on Sila, who um is a part of the who was a part of this society that decides to overthrow the embers so there like I said there are three types of people in this society so three races within the society and that is the embers the dusters and the ghostings the ghostings are the lower are viewed as the lowest individuals in this society that is because 400 years ago I believe was the time like 400 years ago ghostings had um engaged in an uprising for the embers and they lost unfortunately but now every ghosting that is born 
when they are a baby, they have to have their, sorry, this trigger warning, this is content warning right now. They need to, they have their hands cut off and their tongues cut as well. And I believe that those are the two that it is. So every ghosting child to adult only, ha only has like their limb here and they can't speak. So they have a language that they have created through, due to the their lack of being able to talk because again, this is like the pun punishment to ghostings from the embers for the uprising 400 years ago. So 400 years of embers doing this to people that was that was hard to read. It was extremely hard to read. Not only that, but ghostings are the servants to the embers in a lot of different ways. There are ghostings that are um, sex workers. There are ghostings that work within the embers' pal palaces as their like servants, and they're not treated very well uh, multiple times. Pasa is our character that we follow that's a ghosting. And many times um, she says that one thing about a ghosting is no one ever knows that they're there because they go out of their way not to pay attention to them. Like ghostings in Ember's eyes are bit like nothing. And it's it, it can be really hard any situation that a ghosting's in to like read how they're treated because for example, Hasa was raised by Marigo because their children are also taken away from their parents. When and Hasa actually like her mother passed away in labor. But see, you see how I'm getting quiet and explaining this stuff. It's just so sad. Like so many of their backstories are so sad. Um, but Hasa was raised by Marigold, and Marigold is non-binary. Their pronouns are they them. Um, and the word for it in this book is Maswa, I believe, Muswa. It's either Muswa or Maswa. I can't, I don't know which one, I don't know what that U does. But, um, and it's just a cultural thing that is acknowledged. And that's one thing I really love about this book is the cultural acknowledgement of not living within the binary. So there are, throughout the empire, embers, dusters and ghostings that are muswa so they um and i believe it was said that within ghosting within the ghosting race they believe that muswa like have two um soul spirits within them which is very similar to um native american cultures and um so some african cultures as well so i i had realized that when i was reading it i was like oh I see what you're doing there. You're right. Just like culturally, they don't live within the binary. Hasa herself is a trans girl. How old is she? She's seven. Yeah, she just turned 17. So Hasa herself, she's trans. I just loved that within the book, we got a depiction of the fact that it was just culturally accepted that no matter what race you are, even if you, even if the embers consider you nothing, like I said, like even if they consider you like whatever, a throwaway race or like you're less than their race, every like at least their internal identification can align with their external. And that's like understanding throughout all races here. There's no hindering of other people's genders. It's just acknowledged and known. Like it's just fine. It's, it is what it is. And I really love in particular, like I said, Native American cultures, some African cultures that have this acknowledgement. And it's very clear that non-binary trans individuals like they have always existed in history and in many cultures it is not a big deal like literally western cult like this is a cultural thing that makes it like a big deal for other people um and oh, I, don't, I don't understand like again i'm just going to use it from the u.s because that's where i live and that's where i have the most experience and honestly with their political climate right now, this is where I'm getting the like most pissed the fuck off about this stuff because it's like the government is fighting everyone. Like if you are marginalized, the government is like, let's let's do it more. Let's do it more. Um, and it's just really irking me. And I think that has also been the reason why I haven't been reading that much because it's just like I I can't <laughs> like I can't do anything but like stress or sleep. So, anyways, like I was saying. It's a, like, it's literally a cultural thing to force people to live within the binary. And I love that it is clear as day that this is the natural thing that non-binary and trans individuals exist. Like, who, like, oh, why do you care so much what somebody else is? But that's not the point of this. 
I lost, I was, I was describing the book and then I just, I honestly, I got a love, I got upset. I'm just so upset right now. Like the U.S. is sh and it's, it's really messing with me up here. Anyways, so as I was saying, societally, um, within the hierarchy of the society, dusting, dusters, dusters, I'm sorry, dusters would be um, societally more accepted or like in a higher hierarchy than the ghosting. They are more than like, um, there was one line that was just, oh, it was at the beginning of the thing, but it was just like the embers decide who's going to be a soldier and who's going to work on the fields and who's going to, it's more like labor jobs. Oh, oh my God, it's literally here. It didn't piss me off. It made me sad because it says, <sighs> if the empire needed more foot soldiers, you were assigned to strength, even if you were crippled by malnutrition. If they needed teachers, you were assigned knowledge, despite having only a handful of years of schooling. If they needed rippers, you were assigned to truth to tear down the flesh of your people while an officer watched. If they needed more field workers, you were assigned to duty where your skin would be was routinely torn open by overseers with. It was where most dusters ended up laboring for cotton, rubber, or sugar cane. So clearly, yeah, that does just make me sad. Like clearly <sighs> that hurts to read. And it was just really sad and just it just pisses me off that that's how it's like set up. But yeah, understanding like that's how dusters live, like I said, societally, they're in a higher hierarchy or a higher rank than ghostings, but still it's not great for them. It is very terrible to be a duster. Like anytime an ember thinks that you're um, plotting an uprising so much as learning how to write properly or do anything that they don't approve of, they're going to kill you in I'm not going to describe, I'm not going to say what, how they kill you, but they told us how it was done. And it's like this public viewing and it is just <sighs> content warnings. Like I said, it's hard. Um, and then there's the embers. These, these, these dumb bitches at the top. I can't stand them. All of them are horrible. They treat everybody like crap. And, um, Within the embers, there are the wardens who are the heads of each of the different factions. There are one, two, three, four, five of them. <laughs> there is, are, yeah, there's five of them. I thought there was more being described when we started to get another perspective, but okay. And so there's the warden of truth to preach justice and incite justice, warden of duty, do, mm, warden of duty to nourish and maintain the land. Warden of Knowledge to teach and discover all. Warden of Strength to protect and enforce law. Warden of Crime to resist and sow chaos. Now, <laughs> that, is the that is the state of things now. However, some years ago, allegedly, like legend says, that there was an uprising by the name of the Sandstorm, or there was this secret society by the name of Sandstorm. They slayed whoever was in their path and stole 12 ember children. And when they stole the embers babies, they replaced them with their own. So the Sandstorms are duster. It's a duster society. So they replaced the ember children, the 12 ember children with 12 duster children and like they kidnapped the children they kidnapped the babies when the wardens found out that what had happened they slayed all the children they slayed all the duster babies that were remaining or did they so like i said we follow three individuals i've already explained hasa she is a ghosting i don't want to spoil too much and so for the sakes of that for the sake of that i'm going to stick with what I have said and just say, like I, I've already described Hasa, but there's also Sila whose perspective we remain in the majority of part one. I don't know how the remainder of the book's gonna go clearly. And there is also Anor, Anor near Aspie, Anor, um, who is within Amber Society, Sila is within Duster Society. And I'm not gonna go too in depth into each of their stories because live it live it like I lived it because then you're gonna be flipping the pages every chapter had a plot to, like it well I don't I, can plot twists happen every chapter every chapter had a big reveal okay and so 
that predominantly had to do with their um stories so i don't want to reveal them even if it would happen like chapter two or like chapter one i don't want to talk about it <laughs> point is a nor needs to get her ass beat is the point the author did such a great job of setting the scene and having us have an understanding of the politics and the society that we're within and that we're reading about feeling very invested of the treatment that ghostings are under and dusters as well and really hating embers in general because they're just so mean like mean's not even the word they're just horrible they're terrible they're they're torture it's really really difficult to read because of embers but also the author focused very heavily on characters and really setting up your care for the three main characters that we're following especially with the fact that we get Sila's perspective the most you really feel for Sila and Sila is dealing with substance dependency and PTSD and just a lot of mental health concerns that are contributing to her self-medicating in um like I said her substance dependency. Lenore is living with freaking embers she is an ember <laughs> she ha lives this privileged life and yes her mother does not love her or like her at all mm, this is why this is why Nora annoys me because i do want to i want to see on page i want to see her get her ass beat one time that's what i'm saying i just want to see it once that she deserves it she's in this like Nora's character is very 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 intriguing but also more so than anything very frustrating because like i said her mother does not love her has never put love into her is honestly quite abusive to anor and with a lack of love anor has chosen to live in books and to kind of create create her own world through creativity and like lavish things she, she's an ember and so she just has all these lavish things all around her and she like lives within books and the stories within books so her imagination is out there but she makes her imagination her reality and even though she knows a certain thing about her identity she continues to act as though that doesn't impact her or she can't have empathy towards others going through a similar situation to, than her and again i can't go into very much detail about that because spoilers and I don't want to do that for you all but like I just it annoys me like I'm fine with her having imagination and using that for as her escape from her predicament like in she her mother not only does does her mother not love her but she um because of her mother Anora has a very restricted restrictive life and so not a lot of people can be around her except for um who is essentially like her handmaiden and yeah I get that and I feel for Anora for that but again she's allowed her imagination to become her reality and it has made her she has no empathy towards others that I feel like she should have empathy towards this has heavily to do with her upbringing with her mother she like I said the other two characters are a ghosting and a duster so of course they have empathy towards ghostings and and like and um dusters they kind of understand each other's play but embers are the ones ruling over everyone and everything and so they don't have empathy for anyone because who, why do i need to feel bad for you i've never felt a bad thing in life i'm doing great i'm society society being set up like this really benefits me so why am i gonna feel anything towards you and so while reading these other two characters that have such great empathy and then reading a nora that seems not to have empathy and goes us to as far as to just do things and <laughs> she does things that aren't explicitly mean to other people like i don't think she's a mean person and that's why it annoys me because i'd rather you just be mean i'd rather you be mean so then i could feel good about you getting this ass whooping like i wanted her to get her ass beat and i want to feel good about wanting that for her however because she's not technically mean and she's nothing she's not doing things to intentionally hurt other people just the thing she does is hurting people because she's not intending to do so it's like and your mom also doesn't love you and abuses you and yet lived a restrictive lifestyle so i end up feeling bad for her and like i said page two was it two no two i'm not there page 112 like i said she needed to ask me for that 
I don't care why she said it was. I don't care how much sense it makes that what happened on page 12 happened. But it directly impacted Sila in the place it put Sila in. But she was already in such a bad place. And the place that put her in afterwards and what, what Anora did, like... What Anora took away from Sila in that moment. Anora had already taken something away from Sila prior to that but in that moment on page 112 you already took so much from her and then you took this as well <sighs> I feel so many things and I'm so annoyed and I, I'm loving it all I'm loving it all oh it also pisses me that Anora has acknowledged that she's she has an ignorance there in a certain aspect she said oh it annoys me that I'm ignorant about this. And I'm like, yeah, you have a blind spot to things and your privilege allowed that. And just, oh, she just annoys me. She does. And again, I still feel bad for her. And at some point, it's looking like they're going to make me like her at some point. But, but she had the worst first impression. And I'm just, she triggered me, shit. Like, <laughs> that was... Ooh, but yeah, that is, that's part one. Yeah. keep disturbing me as I try to do this update. The world does not want me to do this update, but hello. Hi. I just got back from my niece's third birthday party, so my hair is a mess. I literally got home and put it straight into a messy bun and emphasis on the messy um, and anything else that might be a mess, let it be. I'm, I'm content with it, so <laughs> we gonna roll with it because I have finished part two. I finished part two a while ago, still not that deep into part three, so it's like we still basically have the same thoughts. It's completely fine. I remember what I was gonna say. Um, hey y'all, <laughs> let's do this update. Um, like I said, I finished part two and I do want to, I think I'm going to just continue doing it by parts because I don't want this to be a spoiler filled vlog because I know not that many people have already read this book and I don't see too many people reading it currently. Like I saw a lot of people reading it or intrigued by it during release day and around that time, but I haven't heard any more follow-ups or heard anybody else's thoughts except for those that had gotten arcs. So... For anyone who hasn't read it yet, and I feel like that is the mass majority of people, I do want everyone to be able to watch this vlog and, you know, kind of see my thoughts and stuff. And, you know, this is still kind of like a weekly vlog. Like, this wasn't supposed to be a ded dedicated vlog to this book, but it's still like a weekly vlog. So, um, 
trying to keep that I'm, and I don't spoil books for that so you know I'm just trying to I don't know I'm a mess and I'm trying to make it through <laughs> but that being said I'm still loving it this definitely feels like a five-star read for me because honestly it is just like food for my soul I of course and I'm sure this is the experience of so many other people but like growing up I didn't have that many books that I was reading that came from the a similar culture to mine or my culture and so it was just a lot of projecting myself onto other people's narratives whereas for this book the culture is so similar to mine you know just the overall experience of systemic racism and just chaos chaos and government purposely attacking a single race like i get it i i, I yeah i definitely can like relate to that experience and can feel something towards it and it's just there's just something that honestly feels like food to my soul when reading um stories like that this even if it is sometimes hard to read because I can draw from experience and just because it's sad in general if there's just something familiar familiar in I don't want to say nice about it but it does feel nice to be seen even if it is in like some negative experiences I guess is what I'm saying overall. I'm mainly going to be talking about character analysis because honestly, I feel like that is the most intriguing part to me while reading this book. It's just how multidimensional, how real these characters are. Like it's, they all are going through their own um, identity crises, crises. They're all going through their own journeys. They're all dealing with their own trauma and their experiences are not the same. And yet there are so many dimensions to each experience that each of them has. And they're just really well fleshed out characters that draw me in more and more as the pages continue to turn. Um, that being said, the characters I'm going to focus on are the three main characters. We didn't get much from Hasa in this part, in part two, and I miss her. <laughs> I miss her so much because I do think that she had provided kind of like a, not a filler, but she had provided an ease between Sila, who was on one side of the spectrum um, of like revolutionaries and stuff. And then um, Anor, who was on the other side of the spectrum, kind of living this like privileged life and whatever and annoying the absolute hell out of me. <laughs> And then there was Anor, or sorry, and then there was Hatha, who was kind of like just there to witness, his, witness it all. It was just very, who seemed to be pr quite objective in their role as it stands at the moment. It was just kind of just st standing back and watching the world go through and pass by, just very much a viewer, kind of feeling like a, honestly being in the perspective of a spy. I don't know about that yet. We don't know much about Hatha's story so far. But all I, all I do know is that Gisus is smarter than people think she is. And she sees things because, you know, like the dusters and um, the embers don't really value ghost things. And so Hasa is able to see more than they know that she's seeing because they have been ones that decided that ghost things don't exist, basically. And just uh, like, just let them see anything because like, who are they going to tell? Ember's stupid is the point um, of that whole thing. But yeah, I just know that Hasa knows more than we know that she knows, but we know that she knows more. I, um, I don't know if that made sense, but that's kind of how I'm feeling about her character. And I really love her character and I would love to see more from her character. <laughs> like I just want to be in her perspective more because all the times we were in her perspective in part one, I was just like, ooh. She a bad bitch. She knows so oh, she she about to, she the key. She she got some things. <laughs> she is the key to all the mystery. There's this huge mystery in the book of trying to figure out this map. And I'm like, Hasa no. Hasa, Hasa got the answer to the map. Go go show Hasa. She know. Go go show her. Um, and so I can't wait to get more of Hasa's perspective. And I'm really hoping to see more from Hasa in this coming parts. Sila, I'm feeling very much the same way about Sila. I think before I didn't really go too in depth about like the demons that she's fighting, but she's fighting a lot. She's fighting a lot of demons really from her past and her past traumas. There's like a lot of PTSD she's dealing with in her life. Um, and it's honestly just so sad. A lot of survivor's guilt as well, I would say. And just 
honestly, because of because of Sila's experiences and so much of like how her story was going in part one, I decided to do a whole um, tab just dedicated to like what I would consider behavioral health or mental health concerns or behavioral health um, encompasses mental health in itself so mental health is more like the diagnostic there are the di diagnosis in mental by bi the biology of it all really whereas behavioral health also takes into account your mental health and your like your mental health your emotions and how you react with all of that going with going on inside you so i would say i <laughs> overall like the tab is for behavioral health because again her substance um dependencies and her substance abuse was a huge part of her narrative in part one and i am proud of her to see in part two kind of a recovery journey beginning it just makes me like i i feel like i was go i was leaning towards proud for Sila no matter what because i do really like her spirit and her attitude that she doesn't just like let things happen but i was feeling very bad for her dealing with the substance de substance dependency and just overall dealing with her trauma it just it watching her journey felt overwhelming for me so i know it would be overwhelming for someone who was actually going through it and it was just it's nice to see in part two again that like recovery part of things that seems to be on the seems to be on the horizon now for Anor. Last time y'all saw me, I'm pretty sure I said I wanted her to get her ass beat. I think I also said that I still feel bad for her. And you know, feelings are quite quite the same. They are honestly, I don't really want her to get her ass beat anymore, but I feel like if the universe is fair um if things would like to write itself a little bit one ass beat whooping for somebody that's not her mama would be great like not great but it's just it would just be the world writing itself a little bit um the thing about anora though is that you can't help but like realize that the way she behaves the way she does is because she is dealing with mental and behavioral health concerns that being said, like, I feel like she has this identity crisis or this uh, disassociation with her own identity that she's dealing with. And I can't go into in depth about that without spoiling parts of the book and like spoiling parts of her um, story, which in turn would spoil parts of this book is what I'm saying. But she's dealing with this like kind of disassociative identity thing within herself. It's just hard to see someone see all that is going on like you know being raised with the embers like you know they're shit people <laughs> like you know this and you know that they don't like people like you and yet you just you you allow it to be true and it just it's hard to see someone being willing to justify cruel treatment when they know that if they weren't in a place of privilege, then that cruel treatment would then be, they would be subjected to that type of treatment. Which I mean, it's not like those aren't, like there aren't people in the world that do that. There are so many. Um, There are just so many people that you can probably draw on that are like, that you can look at and be like, okay, you know, if you didn't have this money, if you didn't have this power that you have found yourself into, you would not be okay with the way the government is running things like yeah let's just say point, point blank period there are so many people that will allow injustices to happen to people like them as long as it doesn't impact them and that's what makes Nora's story so hard to read because it seems as though she is a person that would do that and that's why i feel like she needs to get her ass beat um or at least that's why i had thought that before because it was annoying the crap out of me but honestly I feel like it has to do with the way she is raised and there has been hints of the fact that she doesn't actually believe this or that she's just a lot more aware than she alludes to being and I would love to see more of that awareness being present in her story because she still seems quite airhead-esque um, which is weird because she also is smart but as a person 
that was in like all honors classes. I took the, um, I was in the IB program and all that. As a person that spent her entire academic career surrounded by other smart people, I'm gonna let you know there are a lot of dumb smart people. And so <laughs> if uh, like the fact that Anora again seems very smart, smart people can be dumb too. So <laughs> that was one thing that I'm also dealing with. I will say now I'm feeling more for Anora. I do want what's best for her and I'm feeling very conflicted on her journey now with these trials because I genuinely don't know who I want to win <laughs> like I just don't know another character that has become more prevalent in this book if you know about the scene in which a coma is first mentioned then you know I was freaking out which has also brought me so many conflicted emotions because I don't know how I see a love something happening I don't want to say it's a triangle. I don't want to say it's anything really, but I see pairings that I'm matching in my head. And one of them seems to be like the obvious one that the book is trying to tell me to go to. But then there's like this stirring of another one that honestly seems quite ridiculous at this moment in the book, but I could see it happening. Like I could see how maybe it could possibly happen if things were to change. Um, <laughs> But I got like half a book to figure out if things change. So we're fine. We got time. Um, and there's like John's character has been invited. And I just like, I don't know. He has made things so complex and me figuring out my own emotions towards how I feel about the trials and who needs to win them. Not to mention, like I said, the love situation and who needs to be together. They keep they keep describing John as attractive and I can't help but remember that. But also when people are described as so attractive and stuff, I tend to think of them in the same way as people that are always smiling in books and in movies and shows. I don't trust those motherfuckers. Like a person that always is smiling is most definitely the killer. And I'm I'm, I'm sick and tired of people not realizing that. So that's how I feel about attractive people. Like you're definitely hiding something that's gonna turn around and bite me in the butt. So how dare you? I don't trust attractive people in books, especially when their attraction is like the way, the main way they're described when you're like, people are describing them physically. It's just like, that's such an attractive person. I'm like, they are hiding something. They are letting their beautiful eyes and chiseled chin distract you from the truth, boo. Get some, get some, Glasses that you don't need, some prescription glasses you don't need so you can't really see right and just look at them and figure out what they are hiding because John is absolutely hiding something. I am very wary, wary, scared. <laughs> I'm very wary of this new sandstorm. I'm quite nervous. I don't trust them. Um, <laughs> like I said, John is hiding something and what, oh boy, oh boy, what if it's them? Um, so yeah, I don't like secrets and we got a lot of secrets right now, so I can't wait to find out more. I will check back in with you all when I have something more to say, but yeah, just characters are driving me through this. I mean, the plot too, it's all very fascinating, but these characters are so complex and I feel like this is when my like academic brain starts to kick in more and I'm like, I want to write whole essays about each of these characters. They're so fantastic they're so great i love it but i'm definitely gonna need something nice airy and fluffy after this so.
Hello y'all. It is Monday now. Look at me back to back updates. Is that what this is? Oh Lord. It's Monday after work, by the way. <laughs> My hair was a mess last time. It's less of a mess this time. It was really bad last time, but I was by, I was at the pool that day. Anyway, though, so it's Monday now. I have finished yet another part, part three of the final strife. And it's time to talk about my thoughts. Now, of course, just like the other updates, I'm going to stick with character development slash analysis in a way because that's the best I can do without providing spoilers and without being like, I love it. Okay, next update. I love it, which is, is essentially what I'm doing, but at least I'm providing some type of commentary. I don't know. <laughs> this whole video threw me off. I was not prepared <laughs> to do a vlog directly just like just about a book that was not the plan um but the final strike has taken me completely off guard <laughs> but let's talk about it so I would just like to formally apologize I would just like to say I am so very sorry I'm on my apology tour I have the apology typed up on my notes app and I will post it on Instagram I just want to formally apologize to ignore because Fitzis does not deserve an ass weapon. However, she can go ahead and give the ass weapon that I said she needed to John, who actually needs his ass beat. Okay. Oh, oh, I don't like him. <laughs> and that's annoying because I do have quite conflicted emotions with him. Not in, in any way the same as Anor. Okay. The my was conflicted with Anor because I was yeah, I felt like I was saying her name wrong, but I was conflicted with Anora because I was like, I genuinely feel like you have some trauma that has altered your perspective and like altered the way you are able to take in information and react to it, um, which I will get into in a little bit. That's why I was conflicted with Anora because I was like, not enough of this is a I can say is completely your fault. It has a lot to do with your upbringing and the abuse that she dealt with. John, yes, he has trauma. He's gone through shit. I don't like him gaslighting Sila or whatever the fuck he is manipulating. At the very least, I don't know if it's exactly gaslighting, but it sure as fuck is manipulating her emotions and I cannot stand it. It annoys shit out of me. And he is, all my comments with John this part have just been like, just like a man, just like a man. Cause I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. But it's the secrets for me. It's the not knowing things that I need to know about you things. You're a part of a group, but you're not gonna t oh like why can't she know i don't trust that she can't know because you know what you can't know things that are gonna bite you in the ass later tell me don't stab me in the back show me the knife up front give me a chance to fight because i will fight you okay oh, it annoys me it annoys me so much but then there'll be little moments where i'm like okay they genuinely have this connection which i'm sorry i am so very sorry i do not know if i've mentioned john before and i apologize but john is someone from sila's past sila and john grew up together and for a period of time they were not together and then they reconnected and, and a lot of that nostalgia was attached to their relationship. They were thinking of each other as the kids that they were when they had last known each other. And so, you know, I had the rose colored glasses on too. I was just like, that's so cute. They keep describing him as attractive. I think I did say this in the last update. They keep describing him as attractive and I don't trust attractive people in books. Like I said, I had very much rose colored glasses on for John because I was like, I like the nostalgia and I like the nostalgia that Sila is able to have the the ability to kind of live in the good moments when she's with him like the good moments from their past but also she does dive into like the good moments come alongside with the bad when it comes to her past and so there were they were both it was put it was push and pull tug, tug of war okay it was it was a lot and that's where I became very conflicted with John because he became associated with me and seemingly with Sila as, as that stress <laughs> like 
And I just noticed that in comparison, like I had kind of mentioned in the last update, I had seen two love connections that were possible. And although these would usually be deemed as a love triangle, one of them has shown no stance towards it actually being something more than friendship. And it took a long time to get to friendship. So I genuinely can't, I don't know why I feel like this is a love connection besides the fact that I am a Libra and I just love love. I think love is everywhere. I might as well be Cupid making all the love matches I can possibly think of. Okay. Everybody deserves love. Everybody just needs to get together. Um, and so I don't know if this is a love connection or just a really great friendship developing the John. I, I, there are so many times where I was just like, red flags blaring, okay, girl, red flags. You know how on Twitter they'll just be like, he blah, 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 and it's just a bunch of red flags. He would say something and I was like, all I see are red flags. Like I, this, and so I, I drew, I drew red flags in my book. I did, and I would show them to you guys, but again, that it would be right next to the spoiler, so... <laughs> But yeah, there's just know that there are red flags blazing around John and I because of what he means to Sila, I don't want it to be true. And yet my brain tells me remember the Poppy War and how you were so ready to defend Alton? What was his name? Atlan. Something. It was an A. It was an A name for sure. And I was just like, he He's going through some things. So I just feel so bad for him. La la la. He was so mean to the main character. And I was still like, but his trauma, never again. Never again. Okay. I don't care if they're fictional, real. No, we're not letting men's trauma become our own. We're not doing that. We're not letting that be an excuse. We're not going to let anybody's trauma become our own or let that be an excuse. And so John, baby, fix yourself or take this ass whooping that you deserve. That's all. That's all. That's it. Point blank period. We're done. Next character that we'll be talking about today is, I'm actually, oh, well, yeah, let's come back to Anor. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, Again, yeah, sorry, sis. I'm so sorry. Um, it has become very, very clear that my hesitation towards um, not wanting to fully dislike Anor was, well, it was well founded because sis truly did not know. Like, I thought she was just, like, I thought she was purposely being ignorant. She genuinely didn't know a lot of things. And I'm starting to see her learn these things and actually change her behavior. And she also has a willingness to learn. But again, does because of her place in life, she doesn't really have the resources or the circumstances to get the information that she needs to do better use her critical thinking um but she's so close she's so close and so yeah I feel bad now that I said she needed to get her ass beat because it really wasn't her fault that she didn't know things and I knew that there was a lot of ignorance that she did not know but I think I allowed knowing what we know from Silas perspective just well, Sila and Hasa. So I just was like, how could she not know? How could she not know? She did not know. So yeah, my bad, Anor. I mean, you're still annoying at times, but I'm, yeah, I'm just like, it's what it is. It is what it is. You genuinely didn't know. Um, she's lived a very, very, very extremely sheltered life. And we have known this since like the beginning of the book. And yet, it genuinely, it genuinely did not cross my mind how sheltered her life was until she was awoken to some awaken awoke. Oh, she she saw some things and realized had some revelations and realizations. Was it a revelation? It was a realization for sure. I think I'm just saying words now. I, I need sleep so bad. <laughs> but yeah, I am just loving how the characters are evolving now, baby. I, well, I can't remember anything that wasn't today. So I don't know how much I talked about my love for Hasa in the last update. I believe I said quite a I believe I said I loved her. She is my favorite character. 
I don't think I said that. I don't think I actually said that Hasa was my favorite character. But let me say here on today, Hasa is my favorite character. This bitch knows so much. She is so wise. She has had quotes that had me like, ooh. Snatched my edges, snatched Sila's edges. Everything was snatched. Got everybody together. I said, oh, Hasa is the one I love. Hasa is the one that's going to get these girls together if they would just listen. I said, there was one scene in which they were ignoring Hasa, or not they, Sila purposely ignored Hasa. And I said, oh, what we're not about to do is ignore my bitch my bitch with all the knowledge i'm so and it's very frustrating because asa is a ghosting she is being by the jesters and embers in her life or well i don't know if i would say embers are in their, her life because they genuinely pretend that ghosting still exists um but um by those in her life that are not ghostings they completely just like run over her and also act as though she is invisible and I, like, up here, I don't understand that because I feel like if I had a covert mission, I would want the individual that Embers has to, like, just decided, yeah, they don't exist. I would want that to be my spy. That's what I would want. But y'all are just letting good, like, she she's right there. She could be right there and she has helped you get to places. And yet you're ignoring her as though she has no value. Why is that? I might, like, is it internalized racism as well? Of course it is. And Hasa has made very clear that they are all the problem. It is not just the embers are bad. Dusters also believe that ghostings are not on their level. They also don't believe that they are they very much dehumanize them in their behaviors and again act as though they're literal like literal ghosts it's just so frustrating it's, like i said my favorite character is a ghosting okay and honestly all the ghostings we met are the only ones with any goddamn sense so why so why aren't we listening to them they can't speak clear silent knows how to communicate with ghostings she knows their language you can communicate with them you and why aren't you lit like why won't you oh use your brain use your eyes <laughs> pay attention and actually take in what she is saying <sighs> oh, it's so annoying it's, i just want them to do right i just want i want so much for them but if they're not gonna listen to hasa they honestly deserve nothing okay this bitch knows so much we're just we're still on the surface Okay, we're just, we're still surface level of the iceberg. Not even close to heading below sea and the hundreds of depths of secrets. That's the awesome. I didn't got all the names confused. Damn. The, we are at the, we're still basically at the tip of the iceberg with Hasa's secrets. Well, we know. Not even the silent note. Silent, no, no. Silent's at the top of the iceberg. We're somewhere in the middle, kind of, like on our way underwater like we're almost there Hasa knows so much more y'all know the icebergs there's so much underwater we're not even underwater yet Hasa knows so much and they're they're not even this is a resource you want to talk about resources use your resources Hasa is our resource <laughs> oh sometimes I'm just like why why am I so much <laughs> Where did this energy come from? I haven't had energy all day. All of a sudden, here we are. But yeah, Hasa, she's, she's that bitch. And I just need them to recognize it. She's my favorite character. I love everyone associated with her. Well, not everyone. Again, just the ghosting associated, associated with her. Marigold, the ghosting that raised her. Lovely. Love them so much. The, honestly the only parent figure that actually is acting as such everyone else is being a complete ass that reminds me the only other point that i had for this part is that so literally all the mamas are all the mamas suck literally all of them are assholes so that's what we're doing all all the parents are actually yeah not just mamas all parents are assholes and granted they're like adoptive parents and i don't want this to be misconstrued of course 
of course. This is this is not even an argument. I can't imagine someone would be on the opposing side of this. But adoptive parents are not inherently incapable of loving the child that they adopt. I don't know how that could even be an argument. I don't know how anyone can say contrary to that. But you know, there, there are people. There are people out there. And I can't fathom their ignorance. But that's not what I'm saying. I am not saying that adoptive parents cannot love their children that they adopt in the way that like a birth parent can love. That's not or that like a biological parent can love their kid. That's not what I'm saying at all. Absolutely no. But these people did not necessarily choose to adopt the children that they adopted. And so it shows. And again, not even there was one that was a birth mother and she's she big trash she big trash but when it comes to the adoptive parents again in this book none of them truly chose to adopt a kid it's not like they were like this kid this kid needs a parent in their life this kid needs a better future than their birth parent is capable of it's not as though they were like I want this kid to have a better life I want this kid to have an abundance of love and care and all these opportunities that I feel as though I can give this child, all this love, support, nurturing, care, all the things that go into being a parent. It's not like these people were like, let me give that to this child. They wanted these children as weapons. They wanted them as strategies in their grand plan. And it shows because they have absolutely traumatized the shit out of these characters. And again, I'm talking about Sila and Anor, okay? <laughs> they are adopted and John as well. They are all, he is also adopted um, again. So is Hasa. However, ghostings are the wisest, they are the wise ones. So they don't, ex like the person that adopted Hasa, Marigold, they're the only parent in this book that is actually a good parent. And again, parent figure, because they never claim to actually be Hasa's parent they just are a parent figure and see the one person that doesn't have the child calling them a parent is the one that actually is a parent cool 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 but again the one that Sila calls mom and the one that Anora calls mother are not good mothers they each have their own traumas that have impacted the way they treat the child that they adopted and of course that has absolutely impacted the added even more trauma onto these once young innocent babies young, innocent children are now grown grown into adults who just need love because the person that should have been giving it to them their mothers or their adoptive fathers didn't give it to them so anora more so even than sila because at least sila had role models that she felt were like she felt as though she could look up to her mom at a time and she had role models that she, um that were adults that she also grew up with like her adoptive father that she admired and Anora didn't have any of that her adopted mother forced her to be hidden from the world forced her to have a very sheltered life and abused her and so again another reason why I'm like Anor I'm so sorry you don't deserve an ass whipping because her life has been she has had to deal with so much abuse in her life from again the person that is supposed to be caring from her and that has definitely impacted her deep need and longing for love and affection because someone who was supposed to be her mother never gave it to her and re like vehemently refuses to give her the love that you would think a mother would give their child. Sila's mom technically had more of a choice in choosing Sila as her child or like adopting Sila. However, I don't think she really did. I think that it was clear that there was weapons that needed to be had and someone needed to raise the weapons and each person got a weapon to raise and she got a weapon to raise and I don't think she was really for this mission or at least not for the sacrifice that it would have to cost like she would need to do for this mission and it shows in the way that she treats Sila. 
So like I said, the parents are all trash. Like I, um, I also mentioned that Sila had an adoptive father. He has this, he, like, again, he was like a role model to her. So again, we're seeing those rose colored glasses of like, he was this great man, but she has, we have seen some of his quotes and um, he was just a man, honestly. Uh, I don't know about the great in front of his, he's just a man. <laughs> so yeah just thinking about how these parents have impacted these now women they are grown women now and you see how the one that actually had a parent raising them or a parent figure raising them that actually put love into them and nurtured them and cared for them you see how that one individual actually grew into something worth like worth something so like Hasa is well-rounded. She is smart, intelligent, very practical. She's practical, um, independent. She is far more capable than them too. Like, I just, Hasa is the future. Hasa, Hasa for president. Hasa, she is the key. That's what I'm saying. She is the key to unlocking so much stuff. If they would just listen. If they would just listen. Gosh, they're so annoying. But yeah, that's all that I wanted to say for this update. So very deep in like um, generational trauma and like family re relationships when it comes to this one, because truly I would say like how close everyone is and the relationships that were developed more in this part is starting to feel more like family. We got to see more of each of their past, just a little bit more though. So very excited to get into part four because I feel like we're even closer. But yeah, I just, there's just so much. There's so much. And honestly, I'm just furious that they're not giving Hasa the respect that she deserves. Put some respect on her name. Of course, the most marginalized, the one dealing with the most things is the smartest one. That is, it's always how it is. It's always how it is. Hasa deserves so much better, so much better than these bitches. I just, it made me, it made me mad at si Sila. She, Sila used to be my favorite. Sila was the one I was caring for. She was the one I was really feeling for. And I'm still feeling for her, I do. But Sila hurt Hasa. And as I stated in one of my annotations, I will fight for Hasa. This is a character I will fight for. I don't care who it is. So Sila, if it's you, we we just gonna have to fight. The only people I don't, I truly don't like in this book are specifically Anora's adoptive mother and John. And John, at least again, at least John has hope. I don't feel like that hope will be fulfilled during this book, but there are other books to come. And I don't, yeah. Honestly, John is just lost. And so he's like just holding on to something in the same way that Sila is, but mm, I just want I just want them to be smart. If y'all hear whatever's outside, I apologize. This should actually be a quick update, but reading update wise, I have finished part four. Uh, um, do I actually even have reading updates? I think literally my character analysis is the exact same. Um, Anor, all I'm gonna say is Anor is loved. And honestly, that was the highlight of this part for me, finding out that the, Anor, like she, she's loved. <laughs> How I go from wanting her to get her ass beat to being like, somebody loves her. Yes, thank you. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm like, fun. so yeah, okay. Cause I don't know, like once you realize how lacking she was in love and the abuse she faced because of, again, someone who was supposed to be her mother, someone who was supposed to give her unconditional love of not loving her at all and hating her and abusing her for something that she cannot control and something that's not her fault. It was it just made me so sad. Um, but she is loved and that just that's just all that I really care about. Finally, Sila and Anora's friendship has really become a friendship and a very powerful bond. Honestly, the only thing that pisses me off 
is the treatment of Hassa or how Hassa is treated. There was another very sad part that is attached to her story that happened in this part. And I was like, oh God, oh, oh no. I was like, I don't, reading it, I was like, I don't want to read this. Can I just skip this? <laughs> this is the end of the chapter. Can I just skip this? I don't want to read it. I know what's going to happen. I don't want to read it. And I, but I read it and, um, Hasa deserves so much better than the, this world is able to give her. Hell, even this world here, the one we live in, we can't give her what Hasa deserves and needs. And I just, Sana is really pissing me off because the way that she's treating Hasa right now, Sana's just not being a true friend to Hasa right now and it's pissing me the fuck off, okay? The, you ever want to piss me off? Be a person in this book mis mistreating Hasa because I I I see red I see red every time which is honestly quite great because red is my color for annoyed and pissed off and for annotations and so I'll be writing a red like how dare Hasa have to go through this every person in this world sucks <laughs> but yeah that's where I'm at right now oh. <laughs> Uh, Nora has proven her strength in this part. Just great evolvement in um, a Nora story happened in this part. I'm really happy and proud of her. And if they could just treat Hasa right, I would really be happy for them and rooting for them. But honestly, I'm not rooting for anyone. Let Hasa win. How about that? All right, hello, you guys. I am here to close out the vlog finally because I have officially finished the final strike. I have been reading this book for, I guess, three weeks now maybe two and a half weeks I genuinely can't tell I don't know all I do know is that them last 50 pages I couldn't do it I was like I, I genuinely don't want this book to end and so I'm just not gonna read it and then I'll be reading it forever but of course that is not a viable option when you are reading a book that you really really love so I did finish it this morning it was just so amazing <laughs> and those last 50 100 pages it was plot twist after plot twist character development progresses even further for everybody i was just like oh my god i like i don't even i don't even really know where to begin but let's go ahead and just talk about the characters that I have been talking about this entire time and how I'm feeling about them right now. Yeah, right. Let's just stick with that because again, I don't want to spoil things, even though I so want to spoil things. So definitely let me know if you guys are interested in um, seeing a flip through of me and my annotations with this book because not to mention, I was just reading for those last 50 pages. So this whole part had a ton of things that I needed to annotate, but I just didn't stop <laughs> to, to do so. So I'll have to go back and do that now, but let's go for it. So first up, we'll start with Sila because we began this whole journey with her. This whole book started with Sila's story and part one was really all about really getting you to feel for her and her struggles with substance abuse and her substance um, dependency. And then we just got to watch her progress and try to deal with her substance dependency and try to heal from it. And always throughout the entire thing, it was always what will happen to Sila after this? Like, is there, is she actually ever going to be able to recover from this or has she done long-term damage to her body? And the way this is all turned out, I'm just, Ah, oh, I'm ready for book two, Sila. Um, I'm just so happy that she was able to love someone and that love really drove her far. She now is on a whole nother mission and she has her own, a whole purpose that is her own for once in her life, for the very first time in her life, she is not a weapon for someone else to use. She recognizes that she is a human being and deserves to have control over her whole her own life, which in the entirety of this book, it was so great. That was one thing that was amazing with this book. Because every time I would think something, and of course I like mark it down in my annotations of like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is going on here? I swear, like the following chapter or chapters, it would be brought up. So I very vividly remember 
writing down in one of my annotations, like these are human beings. No, no. Well, yeah, I wrote it down in an annotation, but I believe I was talking to you guys also about it in the vlog of being like, at what point do these people, are these people going to realize that these aren't weapons? These are human beings. And they're tr the way these parent figures are treating these now adults, but I'm like, they're children. Um, the way they're being treated by who was supposed to be their parents and like their parent figures was just so horrible and annoying because they were weaponizing these people. And just seeing Sila Farley stand firm and saying, I am not a weapon. I am not a tool for you to use. I am me and I'm going to take control of my own story and I'm going to protect the ones I love with my dying breath. I will sacrifice all for those I love. Just like that passion in her. To see Sila for part one to the Sila I just described. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. <laughs> I, how long I gotta wait for book two? Cause I'm so excited, but I didn't read the bonus chapter and I was going to, but then I was like, nah, bitch, you gotta wait for the second book to come out. Give yourself something to do in the transition time because I'm, I don't wanna, I don't wanna walk away from this story. It's so hard. <laughs> but then on top, okay, so now moving away from Sila's story, we can move on to Anor who also just, wow, it's like night and day with these characters. Who they were in part one and who they grew to be at the end of this book. I'm so proud. And I just, when it comes to Anora's story and how firm she was in, like she didn't even believe that she could lead people in the first part. And then she came to the realization that I am the only one that can lead these people towards equity because I am the only one that like truly under or not understands because it's not like a lived experience for her. But she's like, I am the only one willing to fight for the equality of everyone. And she started using her rational thinking, her critical thinking skills. It was just like, we could fix this in this way. And honestly, I'm starting to feel like I'm quite pessimistic because I was like, let it all burn down. <laughs> Start over from the scraps, okay? And it's it's over. It's, it's a wrap, bro. It's a wrap. <laughs> but then we also got to know that, so here's the thing about Anora. Y'all remember at the very beginning, we had a very tumultuous relationship. Me and her um, was was not really a, a Nora fan, um, and I kind of forgave her because I I had said, well, I um, <laughs> there's a lot she doesn't know, so I'm not gonna fault her for what she doesn't know. Um, the bitch knew some things that I will be faulting her for not revealing. And I understand to an extent why she didn't reveal it because people she loved were in danger. However, why not tell Sila? Like your mom knows nothing about Sila. Like that, nothing. If your mom knew anything about Sila, y'all would be dead. So I just don't understand why this wasn't something that Anor had revealed earlier, especially because she fully trusted Sila with a lot of information far before Sila trusted her with a lot of information. Anor spoke more on her upbringing a lot faster and a lot in a lot more detail than Sila did a lot earlier. And so I'm just confused as to how this part didn't make it into the debrief. Like how, what? Ma'am, this is important. Like y'all could have been doing something. You talking about you when you get in um when you get in power and you get this power you're gonna do it X Y and Z um nah bitch do it now <laughs> thank you Anora I want I want great things for her so bad but I don't I don't see it happening <laughs> not and it's not from anything that is her fault I just don't see Anora being in a place of power for very long because I don't want the embers to be in power for a very long time. I don't, I don't, mm -mm, I don't like this, this, I don't want the government that is set up to be the government anymore. Now let's move on to Hasa's story because this has a great bit to do with why I am saying this. Hasa, 
that's my that's my girl i love her more than anything in the world she is so smart she is so wise not only did hasa know stuff but the ghostings know things okay the ghostings there's no way i can say this without spoiling but when i tell you we finally got the history of the ghostings and i was just i was stuck i was just stuck and so sad and I think that's when I took the break because I was just like, nah, no, this is, it hurts. That was the thing about the last few pages. It's like, it hurt so bad because it was so realistic and just so ingrained in the truth of how governments are run and what it's like to be a person of the African diaspora across the world. Like, it's like so much mistreatment, so much taking of your possessions and belongings and others claiming your existence as their property and even when you're not in slavery anymore because hello in America we, we're not anymore still having this monetary value on black lives and in a property sense but in the systemic racism that continues to disenfranchise and marginalize black people in black communities so they can never have power or they can never move outside of their communities or even get into a position of power really where they can affect change because there are so many things systemically preventing that from happening and seeing that in this book of I am not going to ask permission. I am not going to even act as though I value you as a human being. I am going to do everything in my power to take your power away and I'm going to punish you for it. I'm going to punish you for being strong-willed. I'm going to punish you for knowing the truth. They are w punishing the ghostings because they know they aren't strong. Like they're mutilating these people because they know they're not strong enough to control them otherwise. And Tell me that it didn't make you want to cry because that makes me want to cry so much like as babies they are taking babies in doing this and I am going to leave the trigger warnings down below in the description please give me a little bit of time to do that I might forget but after editing but we'll see it will be in there eventually I'm gonna stick with the main three that I've been sticking with to talk about at the end of this because I can't talk about anybody else without spoiling because if I didn't name them they pissed me the fuck off okay my battery's dying so I'm trying to move very quickly with this but I love this book if you can't tell from the fact that every after every single part, after every single time I've come on this um, camera, I'm like, I love it. It's great. It's five stars. I'm giving it five stars. It is my favorite book of this year. I'm so happy to finally have a favorite book of the year. Uh, uh, clearly, July is my month to find my favorite read. I will keep that in mind next year because I've been stressing. Um, I'm just so happy. And I'm just, I mean, I'm sad and I've gone through a lot in these final pages, but I'm happy to have a book like this right now because I'm just like now I'm motivated to read again. I have that passion to read again. It is a tough read at certain times but the characters are so strong and amazing and beautiful and just who you're gonna feel things. You're gonna feel so many things. And with that being said I'm gonna end it on that note. Five stars. It was amazing. So I guess that's it y'all. I will talk to you guys next time. Go pick up this book. Speaking of picking up this book I just got myself a special edition of it. So I'm hoping it comes through and it's beautiful. But yeah, I will talk to you guys next time. Comment down below if you're interested in me doing flipping through my annotations for this book. Let me know what you guys think. Would you like me to do more blogs that are specifically focused on a single book? Because I can definitely do that. But yeah, let me know down below. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. If you have not, I will talk to you all next time. Bye guys. Bye.